welcome back L let me get my glasses on y'all know the girl can't see without these glasses so welcome back let's get into season two and episode 10 of the real housewives of atlanta storming out and guess who stormed out you probably already know because it ain't but about two or three that storm out every episode anyway so let's get right on into it so the whole how you said Hosea Charity, which is Portia's granddad's charity, want to get together and go down to Houston to catch some things for the um storm victims from Harvey. I'm first. I want to say I'm proud of Portia for being active in her grandfather's charity and want to keep his legacy strong. And I'm proud of her for doing that. A lot of kids are left stuff. They don't be seeing about it. All they care about is money. They don't be trying to work in the charity, help out, go to church, do nothing. And I'm proud of Portia for doing that. So I want to point that out and go on to say that first. So now let's talk about everything going on. Portia was hands-on, right on, jumped into it and everything. So she invited all the other ladies to go. Needless to say, nobody really likes Portia, a fool with Portia. So everybody, you know, was like, basically, well, I ain't going. Well, Cynthia went. You know, Cynthia supports everybody. She's pretty much where the only neutral one, even when she's not neutral. She's always the bigger person and will put whatever differences beside for whatever event. Because, you know, she's the only one that stay on her grown woman stuff. 100% of the time. So since she had an event going on too, she went, wanted to support Portia, what have you. Even Shamil reached out to Portia. They hadn't talked since the whole wedding fiasco thing and all of that stuff when she was sitting up there at the table with Portia. I mean, with Candy, he, he, and Kiki and, and being petty, trying to fit in with that little, the candy coated click, as they call it. But she put all her differences aside and she came out and supported. She wanted to be there, wanted to do whatever she needed to do. She found out the details when Portia was going to be there, what was going on, jumped right in, went. Portia didn't even have to ask. That's what caring people in that's uh, what friends. Candy and Cynthia, they have a cute little get together. Over like they little chips and dip, they talking about you know the whole elephant in the room thing, and it, it was funny. Um, they was right when Kenya cussed Kim out. Kim did hush it up and shut up, and all that kind of stuff. I guess because Corey wasn't out there. I'm gonna tell you something. I think because Corey wasn't out there, wasn't there yet to run save her. She has to keep it kind of at bay. She couldn't act as big a fool as she would normally would or she wanted to because Croy wasn't that that he was going to get some pizza. So she had to act like somebody with some sense. She couldn't turn up like she wanted to because her bodyguard wasn't there. But anyway, I with Cynthia in Bele, she wasn't friendly no way. The aura was bad, like I said in my my last review. Her aura was bad out of the gate. She wasn't about to read nothing to mine but uh, my back walking out the door because I, I wouldn't have paid for that. She basically was saying stuff. She already had seen it every episode. She already had an opinion for him and had her little attitude and stuff ready. I don't know if it was based off what something Nene done told her or what, but the whole situation was a negative and a no-go from the beginning. That's just my opinion. So Candy gonna make the comment. I would, I, I'm not, I would not go down the street for Portia. So I won't be going anywhere. I understand anywhere why way. Candy feel that way. This girl, what she did, what they did to Candy, it was, it was wrong and it was mean to say somebody tried to date rape, rape you, nearly ruin this this girl career. But now fans may see this a different way. So you need to be careful what you say because. Why we understand that, I understand why you coming from what Portia doing was not about Portia. It was about people that lost their homes and all their beginnings. So you need to be careful what you say. Because this is what I be saying to Candy. When you be trying to hold grudges, you be hurting yourself. This is things that can hurt you. Because what Portia was doing was not about Portia. You wasn't doing this for Portia. You was doing this for the people of Houston that lost they everything that they home. They, oh. they didn't have food to eat. It was a drive for that. And if you couldn't put any differences aside, 
concerning Portia for that. You can put it, put your difference for her aside for a free trip to go somewhere. Then you can put your difference for her um, aside to go feed some people for some charity. See, this is, you need to watch what you say because this is the things that fans are going to remember and that the fans are going to hear. So you need to be, watch your comments because that can be taken the wrong way too. Don't mess yourself up, my girl. Anyway, all, like I said, all the ladies had plans. The only one that's about to go support her is Cynthia and Mel. Because the, and that's because Cynthia has something to do. Sheree still having phone sex with Tyrone. She done told Tyrone about what Nene said. Then when she said they said, Did you feed Chucky? Did you feed Chucky? No. Did you feed Chucky? No. We wasn't laughing. It wasn't cute. Anyway, <laughs> Sheree told, she went on and told him about what Tyrone said. Now, this is my thing with Tyrone and Nene. Has Tyrone and Nene messed around? I want to know. Sheree a better person than, than me because in all honesty, I would have done asked Tyrone straight to the, straight out, right? And then, because Nene ain't going to tell you the truth. I'd be like, well, did y'all have sex? I asked both of them because we, we already know Nene going to do one or two things. You have to know Nene, Nene to know how she replied. If you're a true friend of hers, you're going to know when she's lying. So I will ask her, and then I will ask him, and then you'll figure it out from there. But I'd ask them both outright. I wouldn't even be beating around the bush about it. I'm going to be real. Let's be real. Is that, ain't that what she, how she said it on Baby Boys? <laughs> Let's be real. I'm going to be real and ask. Now, I love how Cynthia showed up to this event hair braided laid ready to get on with the get on and to come on she didn't show up with trying to be overdressed with 1800 wigs none of that she is ready to get with it out of all the ladies she be the only one that know how to show up and get the work and still be slayed and pretty if you pay attention to all the seasons all the episodes she know how to get that hair braided ready to work where she don't have to be concentrated on herself she there for the people that's what i like about her so moving on I didn't know that Portia and her mom and them had had it. I've heard her say before that she know what it feel like not to have none, but I didn't know they was like us normal folks when you have to dig in between some, some cushions trying to get a dollar off of, to eat out the dollar menu. I didn't know that times had got that hard for them. I guess, you know, it'd be that hard for everybody. I always assumed that Portion them was like trust fund babies, to be honest. I just always assumed that, that she was a trust fund baby. And they just inherited a little money. I don't know. Because, you know, like she said, her great And the reason I assumed that, because they was always like, well, my grandfather was blah, blah, blah. That's why I assumed that. So, any, anyway. But the shock on Portia's face was... When Shamia came in, it was just so touching to me. Now, I don't know about y'all, but to me, it was so touching. She's like, oh, my God. Like, she was really touched that Shamia showed up. This is what I'm saying when you on your grown, you on your grown lady stuff. You ain't being petty, Betty, and being on no BS. She showed up for a good cause and what have you. And I love how they made up. They sat out and they talked about it. And they both, and pay attention to this, they both own what they did. Shamia said, you know, I was wrong for what I did over there with them. And then Portia said, oh, uh, whatever. You know what? It, it ain't just you. I was in my feelings and being a little sensitive too. And they made up and they moved on. Notice what they did. Take note. They owned it. Made up and moved on. Now, if all the other ladies in the group do that. But the thing is, everybody has to own what they do. Candy owns what she does. None of the rest of them do it. Cynthia, she tries to, but she don't never completely either. She own a few things. Sheree, she half asked to do too. They don't really, when it's direct like that, they directly owned it. And I, 
And I really like that. Now, let's get on to Riley and Candy in this driving. When Riley was driving down the wrong side of that street, and Candy's like, you need to get on your right side of the road. Riley gonna say, but we're just in the neighborhood. Candy, like, it don't matter. You're just in the neighborhood. You gotta drive on the right side of the road. Riley, like, well, I didn't see that in the rule book. I died laughing. <laughs> what you mean? You didn't see it in the rule book. They don't have to be in the rule book. You just drive on the right side of the road no matter where you are. And I guess it got me so tickled because I have grown kids. My kid is 23, 21, and 18. So I went, I've went through this like Candy has. So I'm just laughing because I know how it is. I'm with Candy. Riley is not ready to drive by herself. She either better get she that bougie she, she to get to school. Y'all better pay for the call of Uber because she not ready to be driving to school by herself just yet. Just because you get your license don't mean you ready to drive. You need to have some road. Well, here in Mississippi, we call it road experience hours where you go out with your parents and ride drive so many hours till you get your knowledge of a driving because just because you you can drive and know which side of the road to stay on well for riley that may not even be true <laughs> it don't mean you need to just up and go drive because it's just like my son my son he could drive but he did he waited till he turned 18 to get his license he thought he was just gonna up and go we like no when you show me you can be trusted by yourself. So we just let him drive. After that point, he got his license. Everywhere we went, he had to drive. If I was going to get groceries, he had to drive. If I was going over to the next town over, he had to drive. If I was going the opposite direction to Miss, uh, Memphis, Tennessee, the next time over, he had to drive. Now, he hasn't driven in Memphis yet. Oh, no. I tr I, I'm not ready to trust him to my life like that. But he could drive there, there. I'm like, pull over at this gas station. Let your mama drive, son. But, I, and then, see, he's just 18, too. Now, if he grew up in the city and had to learn in the city, that would be different. But, no, baby, we from the country. So, I had to be carrying him to get him to drive. But, anyway, um, I thought it was cute. Um. I thought it was cute. They better be making sure she comes to a complete stop. But she's going to have a new ticket every week. Then when um her dad called, she had an attitude just like like Mama Joyce. Her attitude is just like Mama Joyce's um, and her mama's. And let's keep in mind, she also holds grudges like her mama. And she's not forgiving just like her mama. But when she started crying, it hurt my heart so bad. She liked to have me bawling. And I'm going to tell you my thing with Riley crying. I feel like. Sometimes Riley is confused. I feel like the, all this girl life, her mama been mad at Rock. All she know how to do is be angry and mad at him because that's all she done heard her mama and grandmama do is be angry and mad at him. So they've been angry and mad at him. Then all of a sudden now you want me to just forget that y'all didn't like him and y'all was angry and mad at him and y'all want me to just just go with him and be around this man and be with him and she don't know nothing about him other than we supposed to i'm supposed to not like him because she she waits for her mama's reaction before she reacts and when she sees her mom and right now her mama is being nice and sweet she confused she don't know how to react because her whole life the reaction is to be angry and mad and crying and disappointed and now she that's her reaction to it she don't know how to react no other way that's number one Number two, he all excited and gung ho about this new baby. Like he all in love, whoop de woo. I feel like she could be like, well, why can he have that kind of excitement with, with me? Why couldn't I, you know, have that experience with him? I, I feel like it's both things. That's my opinion now. Just because it's my opinion don't mean it's right, but I'm I'm rarely ever wrong. Girl, I'm a Gemini. Let me go on to say, I, I got this Indian blood. I mean, you know how we see things and we see these visions. I'm rarely ever wrong. I'm not always right now. I, I'm, I'm telling y'all that, but I ain't. I, I, I'm rarely wrong. But I feel like it's a combination of things, and her feelings is just confused. Like Candy said, he, she just popping up and showing up. He 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 wasn't popping up and showing up on her just then. It, it, how, 
if the man want to call and check on her, how you supposed to prepare her for him to call and check on her? He got to, got to say, I'm going to call you at 3.02 on Wednesday. He got to text Candy and say that to prepare Riley for him to call at 3. This is a bit much to me. The girl 15, look, your daddy's going to call you and see about you. You're going to have to get it together. You can't be running. She being like her mama, all this whining and crying. Candy, sit down. You need it's this is when you sit down and talk to your daughter and be like, uh, he's trying to do better. I understand in the past that I may have acted this way, this way, this way. He's trying to be a better person because I think all her behavior is based off of watching her mom. Anyway, moving on to this charity charity event. Cynthia and Portia are I'm gonna be honest with you. The whole group, Cynthia and Mel, Portia and Lauren, is epic. They are so cute together. They be giving me life. And then when you threw Shamia into the group, this was a good group. Everything was going great. Everything was productive. This was a fun group. I would love to see them take one of them exotic um, vacations together with just those five women. Because it was good and it was a good chemistry where you can actually have fun and we can get uh, some good hee hee ha ha's and see some black women have fun. And then when you, we, because uh, it's okay to have some scenes without drama. And I feel like this would be our group right here. We got it in this show. No drama. It was good. Then I feel like when we ready for the drama, we bring them back. We throw them all back in the mix with all the other ladies. Then we get our drama. Because that way it doesn't portray all black women as full of drama. But moving on. So everybody event went good. They, everything went as planned. They showed up. I'm glad Cynthia seeing sides of Portia she ain't seen before. Like Portia donated to her and everything. But King, uh, Cynthia did typical Cynthia. And when Kenya showed up, she dished, she dished Portia. But then she gonna try to say, well, I didn't know Portia event was Saturday, honey. They got two different tapings of you saying that you knew. The very first one, let me point this out, is when you were sitting down having dinner with Candy. You mentioned that Portia's event uh, was that Saturday. Then when y'all was on the way there, you was in the car when Portia was driving. You said again, well, I was thinking since your mine was Friday and your yours was Saturday, I just kind of left the day open for Saturday. So don't even try to lie. She, You knew the girl was having two events. You went to the one that she had early that Friday, but you knew her main event was Saturday. You knew from the beginning, so don't even try to lie because you done got caught up on it. Not once, but two times. So, yeah, moving on. You dished it for Kenya, somebody that couldn't take the time out to come to yours. She came at the end of yours. And Kenya didn't have nothing going on in Houston. The only reason she had something going on in Houston was either, one, because she needed to record, or two, she was trying to one-up Portia. One of the two. And then when she got there, she had an attitude. So I'm guessing she was mad because she had to come there to do something to try to record. Because when she made the comment, that's what my husband wanted, blah, blah, blah. The producers, the producers have been up her butt about not recording. Because she done promised them this show, this, this footage. She already denied them the wedding part. It don't matter if you wanted it private. You done signed the papers now. For them to record it. And then you reneged on it. Now. Here you go again. Denying them. Some more footage. Because you still. Not. Recording. So. I feel like she here. She got to record. So. She was angry. I'm just going to be honest. Because. They was riding her to record. So anyway, then she gets over here to this house. She rude to the fans. She could have took one quick picture and said, okay, y'all, thank y'all. Let's get to work. But she, she was like, no, nah, no pictures. We're here to work. She was just kind of rude with it. And like I said, and I feel like if she she want, later, we know how can you do. She want to hold over everybody else. I helped build the house. I put them in the house. Honey, Portia fed, fed 2,000 people and gave away thousand dollar checks to so many families she just she she did more than what you've done 
rebuilding the house was nice. That was great. Kenya is competitive. She always needs to say she done better than everybody else. But this was not the time to be competitive to me and honestly. And she was being rude. She was rude to everybody. She was being a butthole. And I feel like her whole situation with recording, she was taking it out on the other ladies and, and the people around her and that she was wrong for it. She got called out for being wrong about it. And it is what it is. And it was what it was. Now, I'm proud of... Uh, Cynthia for standing strong. She did say, look, you was a little rude. Even Mel said, Mel said, honey, but she did try to tell Shamia, honey, it ain't just you. She was mean to all of us. Shamia shouldn't have been trying to take it personal because she was not just trying to pick on Shamia and be rude to Shamia. Baby, she was rude to everybody. Like Mel said, she was being mean to everybody. It wasn't just you. But, and then when Cynthia said uh, something and Shamia said, well, I really didn't get upset. Cynthia was right. Shamil, you did get upset. You really made a big deal about it. So now that you got the floor and can speak, don't try to act like you weren't upset now. But yet when she went to speak, Kenya was determined that she wasn't going to let her speak. She jumped up and walked out. I do have to say this. What Shamia did to Kenya, Kenya has been doing it to people since she been on this show. So I didn't have any sympathy for Kenya for the simple fact. What goes around comes around. You doing to her what you have always done to her. I like how Portia did it. Portia played nice about it. But she didn't have to be. Kenya, like I said, she was nice about how she went about it. Her attitude was a little bit more upbeat. But uh, Shamia was trying to be real real sensitive about it and I'm thinking Shamil you better shut up you see the girl just coming here She, the lady hangry cause they done talking about they done closed the kitchen all she got is a pitcher of ice water and she already tired and stressed out and she ready to eat you better hush before she bite you <laughs> cause I and it wasn't the, I personally don't feel like it was the time for it either we done talked about it later and I'm gonna be honest I really I just really didn't think it was time for it but anyway Kenya had her meltdown. She was like done recording. She's like, I don't like these twitches. I don't got to record for it. Blah, blah, blah. She's like, you're not going to get your moment. And I like that she said it because we know produ producers be pushing for a moment. But she said, y'all not going to get y'all moment on me today because I'm tired. And that let me know that it's pushing her to record. And she was only there working, being petty to record for now. See, keep it realistic. Produ production has a way of messing up the show. Just leave it realistic. But anyway, Candy and Block talk, whatever. That's when he was telling her about... Uh, she told him about the situation. I like how he handled it. He even told Candy she was she was a good mom. You know, and he, he thanked her for that. And asked her about how to handle the situation going forward with Riley. And, and then she told him... That's why I'm like... How you gonna prepare her for when he called? This they doing the most, but anyway, they they are that they're them are a huge different from when the show first come on. So I'm glad that they are improving. But anyway, that's pretty much well. I'm trying to think with anything that I missed. Um, with the as I see, I covered the ladies closing at the dinner, the situation with Cynthia. And that's pretty much well everything. Um, at the end of the show, boy, oh boy, when Cynthia went up to that window and was trying to talk to Kenya, and Kenya rolled that window up on her and drove off. Let me tell you something, Cynthia. Let me sit up for this. Let me sit up in my, in my, in my wing chair for this. Stop calling Cynthia, your, your, Kenya, your good friend. I'm going to tell you why. First of all, you the girl go get married. She dating somebody. Even if she didn't want to tell you about the wedding, she didn't even have enough respect for you to say, okay, Cynthia, I done fell for somebody and I really like him. She, she could have told you that much. But yes, she claimed you her closest friend. Now, she do shit to you like she did. She don't make me cuss. She do shit to you like she did. 
when she rolled that wind up on you and pulled off. Just disrespectful. You would never do that to Kenya. And for Kenya to do that to you, that pissed me off. It really did piss me off. Because how she just going to be rude to you like that and roll that wind up in your face and she couldn't even talk to you for a freaking two to three minutes to see what was going on. Honey, I'm telling you. You do better off making Portia your good friend. Because I'm going to tell you what, Portia may not answer that damn phone. Like y'all, like people be wanting her to answer and what have you. And she may not text every text. But I'm going to tell you, she a better ride or die for you than Kenya is. So I'm telling you, what's that uh, the little psychic lady say? Pay attention. Pay attention. Anyway, this is all my review. I thank you guys for watching. Be sure to look at all of my other reviews. Just click on the playlist that says TV recaps and reactions and grab you a bowl of popcorn and just get into them. And I appreciate you a lot. Be sure to hit the like button. Be sure to subscribe, comment, and share. See you later. Thank you. Bye.